Preface It is 5.50am and I have to snap out of thinking about how to start this book. I'm hurtling along at 40 kilometres per hour in the darkness, just centimetres behind Michelle's rear wheel. It's throwing up sprays of water which look like sparkling diamonds in my headlight. All I can hear is the whirring of the electric shifters as we change gears and the ominous threat of a car or a truck about to pass. I'm pondering chapter outlines when I notice I have missed David's rear wheel passing by. I accelerate by getting off the saddle and punching the pedals to ensure the training group maintains its rhythm and speed. We all want to complete the 80 kilometre bike ride before work. Most of all, I have to catch up before our coach, Steggles, sees that I am lagging, although no doubt he will pick it up later when he notices the spike in my heart rate while conducting his post-session data analysis. I love data and hate data. It can ruin a good story at coffee later when some smart aleck checks your results. When I'm cycling, rolling turns in what appears to be a well-rehearsed sequence with 20 other riders, I truly know I am alive. We have faith in each other and the world, wearing only a small amount of lycra for protection against the wind, the cold, and the workers in cars getting an early start. It is an honour to be here. I bought my first road bike three and a half years prior to this. Back then, a big ride was 10 kilometres at about 20 kilometres per hour. I'd have to desperately try to remember how to unclip my feet from the pedals when the traffic lights changed. In the years since, I have done criterium racing, road racing and time trial, and I have raced overseas and interstate. I have also fallen behind my cycling friends, described as getting dropped, more times than I can count, fallen off multiple times, been hit by a car, ran out of food and water, and learned how to shave my legs. That last one has given my wonderful wife, Lisa, and I another topic to battle over. Who used the last of the shaving cream? I have seen Tasmanian Richie Port on one of his five, to date, wins up Wollonga Hill in Adelaide, an epic stage of the Tour Down Under. That was an experience right up there with being at the Melbourne Cricket Ground when your Australian Football League team wins the Premiership which I also experienced in 1993. Go Bombers! But don't worry, this is not a cycling book. This is a book about personal leadership, human potential, being your best, and achieving all you want out of this precious life we have been blessed with. That said, even in that cycling experience, I recount at the beginning of this introduction there are some key performance tips everyone can use right now because success leaves clues for those willing to learn. Let's take a quick look. To achieve success and become what I call a possibility seeker, you need good coaching. Someone who can help you pick up good habits fast so you don't have to undo bad habits slowly like coach David Sturt, Steggles. Like-minded people, a group of committed, passionate people who are heading in the same direction is a very powerful force and will encourage you to achieve your goals more quickly than if you go it alone. To stretch yourself. As the saying goes, if you're the best in your group, then you're in the wrong group. Accountability. Someone or something that will hold you accountable for results. To take action. Positive thinking is important, but positive doing through taking action will get you there further, faster. Data. Don't guess. Analyse and assess whether you are on track or off track, what you need to improve and what you can celebrate. Discipline. Getting out of bed at 5am to ride is not natural for most people, but it is necessary if you want to improve. This book will cover many aspects of business life. It will be relevant to you whether you are a business leader, entrepreneur, manager, employee working your way up, 
or looking for your next opportunity. I have experienced all of these roles and will bring my experience to you as best as I can. I have one caveat. I am still on my journey too. I am learning, changing and growing and possess the very human trait of seeing the world not as it is, but as I think it is. But as a possibility seeker, I am consistently curious, constantly evolving and open to new opportunities. This book, unlike my previous books, has been written during the amazing era of social media, which means we can connect and talk about the art of the possible so much more easily. Look me up via my Art of the Possible podcast and social media channels and tell me your story. I want to know what great ideas and dreams you have, what you have done and what you are aiming for in the future of this journey called life so that we can all improve and learn together. Rob Hartnett, robhartnett.com, at robhartnett.com.